Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another brand new video. And today I'm really excited to bring you guys my Fire King Masterclass video, right? And this entire video is going to be consisting of all the Fire King combos that I've learned throughout my experience of playing the deck. I'm not only going to be showing you guys some of the more standard combos, such as, you know, Snake Eye Ash or Snake Eye Ash plus the Star. I'm also going to be showing you guys a lot of the niche combos, such as what I would do if I drew Poplar, Poplar plus Witch, what I would do if I got Nibiru'd, and all these um, different type of combos and all these different lines that you guys can take to build the most optimal boards for your um for your game style right so i think uh you know it took me a little bit of time to make obviously not like crazy amount of time uh, because i already knew some of these combos i just had to pretty much repeat them um but i do think uh it was a really fun making i also have a section towards the end of all the combos that i will be showing you guys deck profiles and how i would build fire king for specific events let's say i have a way where i would build fire king for regionals i have a way where i would build it for ycs's and i do explain why i build the decks that i build and I also have a couple of frequently asked questions regarding the Fire King and how I would use my hand traps um, towards the end of uh, the video as well. So as always, this entire video, um, because I'm making this uh, introductory uh, slide video, I actually don't know all the timestamps of the video. But keep in mind, guys, that like the timestamps will be in the description um, below and will be in the comments as well. You probably already seen it in front of the screen as it is. So as always, you guys can skip through all the combos and anywhere you want. Maybe you already know how to do X combo, so you want to move on to, to the different combo. But essentially, the bulk of this video is Fire King combos, right? Um, with uh, you know some little bit of spice towards the end so hope you guys found this video uh, super insightful if you guys enjoyed this uh, type of video even though it's an extremely long one don't forget to leave a like a comment and a sub it would actually uh, uh, be highly appreciated um so let's go ahead and dive into this video and i hope you guys enjoy the content all right guys so for our first combo here we're going to be using a single copy of snake eye ash and we're going to be using our infinite impermanences and cross out designator as just you know proxy cards in our hand to show our hand size during the process uh so no when you're doing this combo you do not get these free cards so the, this is just one single snake eye ash and let's go ahead and go through the combo and i'm going to walk you guys through uh, my thought process behind doing this combo and its uh, benefits on doing it right so normal summon snake i ash snake i ash will go ahead and get popular popular will get original sinful spoils now if you're ever wondering if you should get original or the divine temple you should always prioritize original unless you have access to temple uh and that's just uh via uh diabel star right now in the pure version there's some merit in getting the um field spell here because it does play around nibiru very well but you can still play around nibiru with the original sinful spoils and it's more important in the fire king version because this glues your ponix engine together Together. So we're gonna go ahead and use Snake Eye Ash to send Poplar. Then it will summon Oak. Oak will activate its effect, and Poplar will also place. Very important that you need to do that. It doesn't matter which order this is. You can summon up Poplar, place Ash. Doesn't matter. You just want something here in the spell and trap zone. Go ahead and use Oak. Oak will then send the uh, monster in the spawn trap zone to summon Flambridge. Flambridge will now use its effect to place down. This is very important to remember here. A lot of people, when they're doing this combo, forget that you need to use Flambridge's effect here. Um, and the reason why you do that is in case you get hit with the Nibiru, you need something to send off um, using the Snake at Flamberg effect. Um, so that's really important. Don't forget to do that. <clears throat> Go ahead and link these two together. And then we're going to use Flamberg's effect to summon back the two monsters here. Now, I need you guys to pay attention very closely here because this can branch off in a lot of different ways. Now, I would not summon this into the Sunlight Wolf zone if I had a fire in hand. Now, the only reason why I'm doing this here, because in our example, we're going to be showing a hand that does not involve a fire. So in this case, you want to be able to summon something under the Sunlight Wolf zone uh, to get back that fire in your hand. Now, the reason why you don't want to do this, if you do already have a fire in your hand, it, and it could be any fire, including like Ash Blossom as well. And the reason behind that is because you're able to use Fire King Island to uh, replace that fire body uh, with another body by using Fire King Island to pop this fire out of your hand. But because you don't have a fire in your hand, you want one in your hand so that you get that extra free body with the Fire King Island that you're going to be using later uh, to pop a fire in your hand, right? Uh, and so the reason why if you do have a fire is in case you do get nibiru right later on in the turn you can actually revive this sunlight wolf using princess's effect and then add the a kirin back to your hand if you had a fire already because you saved an extra body so so uh pretty much what i'm trying to say is for this example since we do not have a fire we're gonna be using sunlight wolf's effect because we will never be able to use sunlight wolf's effect uh um in the entire turn anyway 
But because, um, but if we do have a fire in, in our hand, just keep in mind that we will be able to use Sunlight Wolf later on in the turn. So let's go ahead and continue. But I did want to clarify that uh, because it can differentiate basing on your hand. So we're going to go ahead and use Sunlight Wolf to add back our Flambridge Dragon here. Next, we'll make Heat Soul. And our entire goal here is just to make Appaloosa. So you might as well get some, get a free draw in the process. Uh, go ahead and get a draw here. I'm just going to get Infinite Impermanence as our example. And then now we'll make our Appaloosa. Now, typically, they're going to nib us before this anyway. Um, but I will be showing that's a combo in the next uh, um, in the next combo, right? Go ahead and use our original Sinful Spells to get Ponix. Ponix, get uh, Sanctuary. Sanctuary, get Island. Uh, now, we're going to go ahead and use Fire King Island's Effect Chain Link Rebo. Now, that's why we use um, Sunlight Wolf early in the turn. Because now, we're going to be using this Fire in our hand as a free card uh, to save an extra body, right? And the reason why you want to Chain Link Rebo is because you want the Ponix into the graveyard. And the reason why you do this, and it doesn't really matter that much. But you rather just chain the Link Rebo in case like you get hit with Ash Blossom or something. Even though you can clearly negate that but let's say like you get ash blossom on fire king island then maybe you want that ponix on field so you want to see if it resolves first and then chain your link karibo um to the fire king islands effect and then this will still be in the graveyard go ahead and pop this and then uh we'll be able to destroy uh flamberch in our hand will trigger garunix garunix will activate the effect sending arvata arvata will then bring back the ponix that'll give us three bodies for a princess bring back anything and make ample well and this is our entire board off of one singular snake eye ash which is appaloosa and ample whale with garunix and grave um Pretty much five cards in hand, Princess Garudix, Heat Soul. Um, when the whale gets destroyed, it will be able to bring back this Heat Soul. And then you have access to Arvada through, like, you know, uh, Garunix sending Kirin. We'll get Arvada. Bunch of interruptions, original as follow up. Uh, like I said, five cards in hand is absolutely crazy. And also, if you get hit with Cosmic Cyclone, it's almost not going to matter because it, yes, it does get rid of Appaloosa, but that's basically like using Imperm or anything on Appaloosa because then the Ample Whale will be able to bring back the Heat Soul. You'll go up to six cards in hand and you're beating the cosmic cyclone as if like they just went minus one essentially so it just doesn't actually matter so that's the first combo with a single copy of snake eye ash now in the next one we'll talk about one single snake eye ash and how it beats nibiru and how our board differentiates through that all right guys now this is the exact same one card snake eyes combo but i'm going to be showing you guys what happens if you do get nibiru and how the board differentiates and the board that you can build past nibiru so the same thing applies we're gonna go ahead and summon snake eye ash popular into our sinful spoils the exact same thing oak bring this back go ahead and send oak in the monster don't forget to use flambridge effect to place one more time and then now we're essentially back to this exact same checkpoint where we got to Sunlight Wolf, summoning back Ash and Oak, adding back the Flamber Strike in hand. Now everyone's gonna if they have Nibiru they're gonna use Nibiru here because you're threatening Appaloosa as it is already with these uh three monsters and obviously if they don't we're gonna make Appaloosa anyway like we did in our previous combo uh so for this example um I'm pretty sure everyone would Nibiru here because Appaloosa is coming so we're gonna go ahead and Nibiru ourselves here and giving us our nice little token. Now, how we go from here is we're going to activate our original Sinful Spells to send that Poplar. That's why we had to use Flamber Dragon to place, which is really important. And then that will get us our Sanctuary. Sanctuary will get us Island. Here we can make our IP Mascarena. And now, because we have that Fire in hand that we added back from Sunlight Wolf, we can use this as fodder to increase our board size because we can't really use this Flamber Dragon anyway or pretty much any fire that you add back off of Sunlight Wolf. And the Ponix is in Graveyard, so that's pretty much an extra body that we'll be getting. We're going to head and send our uh, Flamber Dragon, and then now we're going to summon our Grunix. Grunix will send Kirin, and Kirin will pop the Nibiru, so now we don't have to deal with Nibiru uh, pressuring our IP or anything. So we're going to go ahead and pop that, summon back our um, Ponix. Now we're going to go ahead and link the IP and the Grunix away for Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess will then summon back. It doesn't really matter which one you want to summon back, but you can summon back either one you want. And essentially, what that entire board uh, ended on right, was... Uh, a Ample Whale and a uh, Flamber Dragon. So now you can interrupt them, you know, with Flamber Dragon in any way, or you can use Princess to pop that same Flamber Dragon that you had um, on your field. And essentially, that's pretty good, right? Because you pretty much got Nibiru. You're able to beat the Nibiru by 
Kirin popping it, ending on Ample Whale, still having Princess and Grunix access uh, in Graveyard, as I uh, listed here. And then you also have that Flamber's Dragon as a floater to get your follow-up plays. So I think uh, after getting Nibiru and pretty much only having Snake Eye Ash and nothing else, you're still able to end on Ample Whale plus a Promethean Princess plus, you know, Grunix and like, like I just said, all those cards. And I still think that's pretty good. And that's the one card Snake Eye's Ash combo after getting Nibiru. All right, guys, so now we're going to be going into our two card combos. Now, this is Ash Witch, but we do not play Divine Temple. Don't worry, guys. I do have combos with Divine Temple that will be shown later on into this video. If you guys are watching this straight up. But for this example, we're going to be assuming that we do not play the Divine Temple of the Snake Eyes. And this is our combo with Snake Eye Ash and Diabell Star, the Black Witch. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our hands here, get our Snake Eye Ash, get our Diabell Star for our example, of course, and then get some proxy cards here as just to view us, um, our hand size. So shout out to Cross Out Designator. Number summon Ash, get Popular. This is very similar to our one card. At the start, go ahead and summon Oak. Oak will bring back um, any card. Popular will place anything. It doesn't really matter. Go ahead and bring back Flamberge. Flamberge will then place Popular, and then we'll link it to our Sunlight Wolf. Summoning back two monsters, and then getting back our Sunlight Wolf add and our Flamberge to our hand. Go ahead and go ahead and uh, try to make our Appaloosa to play around Nib. We're going to grab Imperm uh, as our proxy card. Uh, so we do have seven cards in hand right now. So pretty insane. Go ahead and make Appaloosa. Appaloosa sends uh, uh, Ponix. Barking Island will activate. Then we'll chain Link Rebo to get it in the graveyard. Go ahead and get our Garunix. Garunix will send Arvata. Arvata will bring back um, Ponix. Now we have a free card. Now we have um, something to discard off the Abel Star uh, to get us an extra body. And then now we're going to go ahead and link all these three away for um, Promethean. Promethean will be able to summon like Arvada. Then we're able to summon on Ample Whale. Now this board is also very, very impressive. The one thing that's different um, between this and the one card Snake Eye Ash combo is that we do get an Arvada out of the process. And that's pretty good because not only do we get an extra interruption, obviously, but we checkmate talents in the process because if you use um, appaloosa first uh, no matter which one they take with talents afterwards it's really annoying because they can't really use it because like whenever i they appaloosa i'll just arvada if they take arvada and they use arvada i'll just appaloosa <laughs> so like it doesn't really matter which one they take so it has a checkmate here on um talents even though the board looks like it can be broken by talents it really can't uh, so I think that's very good and something that you can do extra with uh, the Diabell Star, the Black Witch. So that's pretty awesome. Now let's go ahead and go on to our next two card combo, um, showcasing if we do get the beard. All right, so this one is exactly similar to the last one. This is just the two card combo of Ash and Witch without Divine Temple. But this is what happens if I do get the beard and I'll show you guys where I branch off. That's different from the one card combo. So very similar as to the two card witch combo. Nothing um, too crazy here. Um, same thing, same thing. Go ahead and summon Mega two monsters and then get Nibiru here, right? Because this is the checkpoint where we're threatening Appaloosa. So this is where they would probably Nibiru. We're going to give ourselves a token. Original, we'll get Ponix. Ponix will get Sanctuary to Island. Go ahead and make our, Apple, uh, make our IP Masquerina here. This is very similar to the beginning. We're going to go ahead and use our Fire King Island to pop that Flamber that we just added back with Sunlight Wolf to get us a free extra body. Go ahead and send the Kirin because the Kirin now will be able to pop the Nibiru so that they don't pressure us with this Nibiru body on field. Go ahead and use our Diabell Star now. Diabell Star can send the Sanctuary off field or any card in your hand if you want to get it out of your hand. Go ahead and link those for Promethean Princess. Promethean will then get our Sunlight Wolf. Sunlight Wolf will get our Heat Soul. Heat Soul will be able to draw us an extra card. Now we can link the last two for Ample Whale, and then on the opponent's turn, we can get another Heat Soul draw. So unlike the other combo where we're just ending on Ample Whale Pass, in this combo, we get Ample Whale and two draws off Heat Soul, which is pretty insane. So the end board is Heat Soul, Whale, Princess Garunix, five in hand after getting the beard and, you know, the full loaded graveyard. And this is absolutely broken because even if they have Cosmic Cyclone, they can Cosmic us, but the Ample Whale will bring back uh, Heat Soul or IP, whichever one you want. So it's as if, like, you, nothing really happened. And the two bonus draws that you get off Heat Soul can potentially draw you two more hand traps or, you know, any interruption cards such as like another Kirin um, in your hand so that you can play, you know, it's uh, random, but uh, very high chance because your deck is pretty much thinned out of all the Fire King cards and almost all the Snake Eye cards at this point. So the only thing you can really draw with the Heat Soul is non-engine. Uh, so that's very, very cool uh, for this combo, right? And definitely way more stronger than what you could have done Um uh, let's say you don't have the witch, right? Because like, you know, two random draws. Pretty good to me. So that's the full combo after getting nipped with having Ash and uh, Diabell start the Black Witch. 
All right, guys. Now, in this combo, I'm going to be showing you guys Ash Witch again, but we are going to be using Divine Temple into the mix this time, okay? So let's go ahead and get our cards, Ash and Witch, and then three infinite impermanence as our proxy cards. Go ahead and normal summon Snake Eye Ash, get Popular. Now, this time, we're getting the Divine Temple. Finally, something new other than original and doing the same old combo that we have been doing for the past four combo tutorials. But in this one, we will, we will be able to add our Divine Temple into Snake Eyes because we do have access to the original through Dia Bell Star. Go ahead and activate our um, Divine Temple. Divine Temple will play Snake Eyes Oak. Then we'll use Snake Eye Ash to send Snake Eye Oak to get our Flambridge Dragon. Now we're going to go ahead and this is really important to link uh, specifically Popular and Flambridge. So you can't really send anything else. So make sure to send Popular and Flambridge Dragon here. Well, then we're able to summon Sunlight Wolf. And then we'll be able to chain block this Flambridge by going uh, Flambridge Dragon Chain Link 1 and Popular Chain Link 2. So this will beat cards like Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion. Go ahead and place back our Flambridge Dragon onto the field, which is really important um, that you summon this because if you do get hit with an Nibiru, you definitely want to summon back the Flambridge over any of the other Snake Eyes. Go ahead and summon back two monsters. Then the Oak will be able to activate, which gives us our, la our third body on field. Then we'll link the Sunlight Wolf and our Oak and our Ash into Apollosa. And then we're able to summon our Witch because we do have free cards here in terms of Divine Temple and our Flambridge Dragon since we're pretty much using the Apo as our uh, protection through Nibiru and not Divine Temple anymore. Uh, so we can get rid of all these cards because now we're going to start playing with the Fire King stuff. Go ahead and use um, uh, Diabell Star. Diabell Star would then get Original. Original will send Divine Temple, getting our Ponix, and then this is the Fire King combo, Sanctuary Island. And, you know, pretty standard here. Pop our Ponix, go ahead and pop Garunix, and then send our Vada from our deck and then summon back our Ponix. Go ahead and link these two away for a Promethean Princess. I actually think I messed up here, so I'm gonna go back. Uh, so I'm supposed to make a IP Mascarena first because you do want to um, use it with the Flambridge Dragon, so that's my bad. Uh, so all you have to do, uh, what I did wrong there, is make I IP first and then link the IP and the extra body into Promethean Princess because then the Promethean Princess will be able to summon back our Flambridge Dragon and then because in this particular combo, we don't use Flambridge Dragon's effect early on, so now we still have access to Flambridge Dragon's effect to place. So we will be placing our IP Mascarena and then using our... Uh, last remaining pieces of Promethean and Popular to summon Ample Whale. And this is our entire board. It's Appaloosa, Ample Whale with Flamber's Dragon and IP Mascarena. Way more interruptions, way more follow-up. Uh, same amount of cards in Graveyard. Uh, on their turn, when Grunix comes out, you're going you're gonna to be able to get another interruption through Kieran popping and Arvada Negate. Uh, so that's pretty good. And also post side, if you want to play around the take cards, such as Mind Control, Snatch Steel, and all those type of cards that are somewhat gaining popularity and you have a read that your opponent is playing them, um, um, kind of obvious if let's say they don't hand trap you at all then there's a good chance there's like a uh, mind control or change of heart or something in their hand so then you can also optionally use like you know um Flamber dragon in the draw phase to summon back summon out your ip and then beat those type of cards so i think that's uh, pretty cool right uh, so that's pretty much the entire combo for um ash plus witch and uh with divine temple so let's move on to the next one uh pretty much the exact same combo but i'm going to show you guys uh what happens after you get nibiru and the board that you can make all right, guys, let's go ahead and do our exact same combo that we just did on our last one, Ash plus Witch. But let's see what happens if we get hit with a Nibiru now. So go ahead and get our Snake Eye Ash and D Bell Star and our three crossouts. Uh, go ahead and do the exact same thing, Snake Eye Ash, Sending Oak, Summoning Flambridge. Um, linking these two away for our Sunlight Wolf once again. Don't forget to chain block this to beat Ghost Spell. Go ahead and summon back our three monsters. Uh, Oak will summon back our third monster. Now, at this point right here, I'm pretty sure everyone with Nibiru, because like I did in our previous combo, we're instantly making Appaloosa with Sekai, Ash, Oak, and Sunlight Wolf. So if anyone has a brain, they will have to Nibiru you here, or else they'll never get to Nibiru you again. So for example, we do get Nibiru here. And we're be losing four monsters, getting our token out, and then Divine Temple will obviously activate because we've got Nibiru to summon back our Flambridge Dragon. Now what we do is we summon our Dia Bell Star, the Black Witch, and it's important to send a card from your hand. You might be going minus if you have real cards in hand, but you want to be able to send a card in your hand because when you set original, you need to use um, original to send Temple. So you can't send like Temple for Witch because then the original has to take up an extra body and you want the body still. So you need to discard a card in your hand with Dia Bell Star and not the Divine Temple. So we'll go ahead and set our uh, Dia Bell Star. Now, you know, original will send. Um, the temple and then the original will get our ponix ponix get sanctuary then sanctuary will get fire king island fire king island will activate sending our ponix then ponix will be able to uh get grunix grunix will send kirin kirin will pop the nib 
um, and then uh, some Mechaponics. Now we'll use Diabell Star and that token to make IP Mascarina. Use Garunix and IP to make a Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess will summon back our Silent Wolf that has not been used yet, which is pretty cool. Go ahead and link that for Ample Whale. And because Silent Wolf hasn't been used yet, we'll be able to use Silent Wolf's effect to add back that Kirin that we just sent from Garunix. So we have another layer of interruption, you know, to you know play around cards like you know a bunch of take cards and also manipulate our timing with whenever we want to summon a Garunix. So that's pretty good. And then because we haven't used Flamber's Dragons yet in this combo and we did make IP before, we'll be able to use the effect to place our IP Mascarina. And this is our entire end board, which is absolutely insane. We still get Flamberge plus IP, which is, you know, follow up plus SP, Little Knight. We use um, Ample Whale to add back here. And so now we can play around a lot of the take cards, such as Mind Control, Change of Heart, and having another layer of interruption. And don't forget, guys, that our board still has Princess and Garunix in Grave. Uh, so anytime we can still interrupt our opponents, right? So... Literally, as I made in my notes here, your board literally gets better after getting Imperial because they just hand loop themselves and you pretty much ended on everything, essentially. Uh, so this board is absolutely powerful. And uh, yeah, Temple is absolutely insane in facilitating this type of board uh, through Nibiru, right? So this is the two card combo with Ash Plus Witch that beats uh, Nibiru, the Primal Being. All right, guys, so in this video, we've actually gone through a lot of the main standard streamline combos that, you know, you um, typically would, uh, you know, have in almost every opening hand, which we went over Snake Eye Ash plus Witch, you know, Snake Eye Ash by itself and all those type of combos. But now we're going to go into the more niche combos and the more awkward hands, which I think is could be very insightful for a lot of people, right? Because I think a lot of people um, would know some of the basic lines, but this one, uh, but these lines are actually a little bit more different that aren't on a lot of uh, youtube tutorials and things of that nature right so in this particular example i'm going to be showing you guys what i would do if i drew snake eyes popular with diabell star and the black witch in playing around a certain type of hand traps right so this requires divine temple and this combo will actually beat nibiru the primal being and it will beat droll and lockbird both two powerhouse hand traps and you didn't even draw snake eye ash you, it's literally popular and diabelle started black witch so let's go ahead and show you guys this combo and guys if you guys made it this far and you guys are enjoying a lot of con uh this type of content don't forget to leave a like comment and sub because um you know this combo is pretty sick so let's go ahead and get started here getting our popular this time and then three of our proxy cards um down here so we're gonna go ahead and Start off with normal summon Snake Eyes Popular. Now, I actually think it's really important that you summon Snake Eyes Popular before you use Witch because you want to see if the Popular gets interacted with, let's say through Impermanence or let's say you get Droll and Lockbird, then you can manipulate which card you can uh, send in your hand uh, based on more information, right? So let's say they hit you with a Droll and Lockbird here, for example, then you're able to be like, oh, well, I, now I don't want to really use this um, extra card because I'm under Droll, for example, something like that, right? So always summon this Popular first to bait out more information and then now we're gonna go ahead and use divine temple divine temple will play snake eye ash and keep in mind guys this combo is gonna beat nibiru and play around Joel and lockboard because we are no longer gonna be searching for the rest of this turn now we will and we will be able to summon our dia bell star summon sending a card from our hand dia bell star will go ahead and set a card which is original sinful spoils original will then send that snake eye ash that we had uh, in our spawn trap zone to summon oak oak will bring back snake eye ash and here you don't use the effect here it's really important that you don't use the effect here because later on we're going to be using the snake eye ash to be placing this in the spell and trap zone so if you do get nibiru the snake eye ash can come out and you can actually still do full combo because you haven't used poplar's effect in the hand yet um so that's actually really important that you don't use snake eye ash here uh something to um you know remember because it's very easy to just oh you know i summoned it so i have to activate it um but you actually don't activate this here and at this point now we're at four summons so like i said earlier we're playing around droll and nibiru so at this point now we're going to branch off into our flamber's dragon as our fifth summon go ahead and make our ip mascarina here by sending poplar and ash now like i said this ip is our fifth which they can a bureau here but the point is here now we're going to be able to get uh poplar's effect to place right Poplar will then place back our Snake Eye Ash. So now if they Nibiru here, our Snake Eye Ash will come out and then we'll get our Poplar and we can still do a lot of the link climbing plays because we'll have three bodies on field, including the token. Now we're gonna go ahead and send our uh, IP Masquerade away with Dia Bell Star. And this is really important because this Dia, the Dia Bell Star is the only way you're gonna be able to make Selene because it is a spell caster, which is pretty cool. Now, now let's say you don't and you're wondering like, oh, what if this card wasn't cross out designator, right? And the card that I discarded, don't you have two spells? 
which is original and divine temple but no i have three because the snake eye ash actually counts as a spell card towards selene so this combo works and this does not have to be a spell card that you discard this could be anything uh that you discarded with black witch and this combo will still work um and a lot of people or your opponents might be like hey you don't have uh, three spells but yes you do because you do have a uh, snake eye ash as a spell card so i think that's pretty cool and how you use selene here so we're gonna go ahead and use selene to remove the counters and then go ahead and summon summon back our black witch and now we'll be able to make our apollosa here and now at this point we're safe from the bureau essentially and now we'll, we haven't used snake eyes oak yet so now we'll be able to use oak sending our snake eye ash summon about flamber's dragon and then flamber's dragon will go ahead and place our um we'll be able to place our ip mascarena back on the field um, so I think that's really important there because now on their opponent's turn, our end board was Appaloosa plus Flamber Dragon plus IP. So even if they have cards, um, like, you know, if they, they try to play and they have, uh, you summon anything and then the, you, uh, activate the effect of the divine temple, then it doesn't matter because you, your cosmic cyclone pretty much always gets checkmated no matter what. Um, because if you uh, activate Cosmic Cyclone on the IP, then the Flamberge will be able to chain, summon it back out. And then if they, if you wait later on and you normal summon any monster, you just activate Divine Temple first to target your IP. If they chain Cosmic Cyclone, you just chain Flamberge Dragon. So you beat Cosmic Cyclone, you beat Nibiru, and you beat Joel and Lockbird, and you end on a crazy board, which is Appaloosa, IP, and follow up with Flamberge Dragon. So I think the combo is absolutely insane, and it does not revolve Snake Eye Ash at all. So that combo is... Uh, pretty broken if you were to ask me so it, it helps your one of your more awkward hands into something very amazing right so i think that's pretty cool now, if you guys thought the previous combo was cool with Poplar and Divine Temple, I'm going to be showing you guys the exact same combo, but let's see what happens if we do get hit with the Nibiru and how our board actually changes, because I do think that's valuable information, right? So let's go ahead and get started here, doing our Poplar Witch Line, and then seeing what happens. So let's go ahead and grab our cards. For our example, this time we're going to be using the Nibiru, the Primal Being. doesn't really matter um, any uh, card you discard, but this is just our example. Normal Summon Poplar, like I said in the uh, last combo, we're going to get Divine Temple. Divine Temple temple we'll get a snake eye ash go ahead and send any card out of your hand for diabelle star the black witch diabelle star will then get original original will send the snake eye ash in the spell and trap zone to summon oak oak will then go ahead and summon back our snake eye ash link poplar and snake eye ash for ip go ahead and place poplar back and now at this point um we haven't threatened anything yet so they probably won't nibiru yet but they definitely will nibiru um when we summon selene because selene telegraphs that appaloosa is coming out and if if they don't nibiru we literally are gonna make appaloosa like we did in the past combo so for the sake of this for this example they will be nibiruing us here which is the most optimal spot to nibiru so we're gonna go ahead and take our Nibiru to the face, summon back our token, Divine Temple will activate, summoning back our Snake Eye Ash. Snake Eye Ash has not activated its effect yet, so we'll be able to search um, and get our Poplar. Poplar will then summon um, itself. We have used Poplar yet, so we won't be able to um, we won't be able to uh, search anything, but we pretty much don't have anything to search anyway. Now we'll use Snake Eye Ash's effect to send that and the temple because we pretty much are done using our temple because we got the value from summoning it off the Nibiru. Go ahead and uh, send the two together to summon out our Flamber's Dragon, which we have not summoned yet, by the way. So this is why this combo works. Flamber's Dragon will come out. We'll, we'll be able to make our Nightmare Phoenix because we have used IP Masquerina already. So we need a generic monster to make uh, with our token. Now we're going to go ahead and use our Flamber's Dragon to summon back two uh, Snake, Eye, uh, Snake Eye monsters. Go ahead and link those together for Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess will then summon back our Flamber's Dragon. Uh, Promethean will uh, link together our that and the Snake Eye Ash on field to summon Raging Phoenix. Uh, Raging Phoenix will send summon Zelantis. Zelantis effect will be able to summon. Um, now we'll be able to use Princess because they do have the Nibiru on their field. So now we can target um, Promethean Princess, Popular, and their Nibiru. To summon back our Promethean Princess, that will trigger our Raging Phoenix. And uh, obviously this is turn zero, so this is not OTK. But this would be OTK if, you know, um, if... Um, if uh, we did have an extra turn, this would be actually OTK. Uh, but let's say it's not OTK. Now we're able to use our Flamber Dragon effect because we haven't used it yet to place back the IP. Now we'll go ahead and link the two monsters away into our Ample Whale. Now, this is pretty much our end board 
at, with Poplar and Witch. So this is not Snake Eye Ash, and we got hit with Nibiru. And you can actually do all this under Droll and Lockbird. So you can get hit with Droll, and you can get hit with Nib, and you did not open Snake Eye Ash, and you can still end on this board. So this entire board is pretty much I, um, IP plus Flambridge. Uh, nothing too crazy there, but you know, guaranteed follow up with uh, Flambridge Dragon along with SP Little Knight. Then we have Promethean Princess to be able to destroy Ample Whale. And when Ample Whale is destroyed, we can still trigger our Raging Phoenix and we can summon back um, our Link 3 or lower. So either Selene or Nightmare Phoenix to get, you know, some bodies on field. And at the same time, which is really nice, is the Zelantis here after you make SP Little Knight, you can actually co link the SP Little Knight to the Zelantis and they can never um, enter battle phase and attack over your SP Little Knight because uh, the Zelantis um, has an effect where, you know, it can destroy cards in the battle phase, which I think most people know. But when you summon SP, SP co link to this zone it's really really broken because they can't actually out the second effect so they just have to play into it and uh yeah you actually have way more interruptions and it's a lot harder to break than it looks and this is literally through um yeah nibiru and uh it did not require any searching to uh, do this um at all other than uh, snake eye ash um searching popular first right um so i guess this doesn't work if you get drilled but this does work but the combo typically will work if you get nibbed and drilled but uh if you get nibbed then you also obviously can't beat droll but i think that's fair a fair trade right because you just open popular and witch uh so this is the line that you do very um different line i would say and i haven't seen anyone do this line so uh if you guys found this combo uh, pretty interesting don't forget to leave a like comment and a sub because uh this was a pretty good one i would say and let's go ahead and go over some more of the combos into the next portion all right guys so this combo is actually an otk combo this is not a turn setup combo and this combo is revolving around the double flambridge dragon that uh, chris leblanc and hani jahari played for ycs las vegas they decided a second flambridge for the purpose of doing an otk through nibiru and this is exactly how you do it so let's go ahead and get started right let's say assuming we did go second now this combo requires some setup to do and i'm going to give you guys the scenarios where this will come up so number one you need access to a spellcaster whether whether that's using effect Baylor on your opponent's turn, whether that's using Droll and Lockbird on your opponent's turn, or you yourself drew Dia Bellstar, the Black Witch, and this combo will work. And also your opponent needs to have pretty much one monster on field or even two monsters, which is fine. But the purpose of why this combo works is because due to how the meta is evolving, this combo works because post side, you will be having about 20 hand traps essentially um, through, you know, Ghost Mourner, Ghost Bell, Droll and Lockbird, Impermanence, Ash Blossom, Nibiru, you name it, even Cypher frame delta and all that stuff so the purpose of you playing all these ham traps is your opponent is supposed to pretty much not have a board at all and the way you can otk them is uh, you can otk them past the nibiru uh, because that's probably the only line of interruption that they could potentially have that will keep them in the game still right so this requires your opponent to pretty much have an empty board and you need a spell caster but those two scenarios are very likely to happen post side anyway so it's really important that you guys know this combo if you guys are deciding to play this combo into your deck so let's go ahead and get started with our two Flamberg OTK line. So, like I wrote all here, you guys can pause the video and pretty much read this. I pretty much said the exact same thing that I said here in my notes, um, but uh, this is more a little bit more concise, but I did want to say it in you know verbal form. So let's go ahead and uh, get started, right? Uh, go ahead and activate our bonfire so this setup by the way only requires you to have snake eye ash or the abel star uh it's a one card combo so it's a one card otk through the bureau right so let's go ahead and get started here uh number seven snake eye ash snake eye ash will get our poplar poplar would then add divine temple on the snake eyes divine temple will then place flamber dragon which is different uh, from our original combos because um some of the com almost all the snake eye fire king combos uh, pretty much uh revolve us putting oak into the spawn trap zone but because we do play two flamberg we can place our flambridge now Go ahead and make Link Karibu, and then we're going to go ahead and use our Poplar to place itself. We're going to go ahead and use Snake Eye Ash Effect to send that and our Poplar to summon Oak. Oak will then bring back our Poplar from our field. And then now we'll be able to make Hita the Fire Charmer because they this is obviously turn two. So they need something in the graveyard, um, like a fire. Um, also, if they have a dark in the grave, you can also make dark too. So it's not it's not like they have to have a fire. They can have Dia Bellstar in grave and this will still work or link Karibu in grave and this will still work because either a dark or a fire go ahead and summon anything out it does not matter you're just using it as a link climb material go ahead and summon Celine. Celine will then bring back effect failure now at this point you're threatening appaloosa essentially or access code or whichever you want and you're probably going to get nibiru here because you're threatening one or the other um 
Yeah, because now they'll see Celine. You're threatening Appaloosa, so they will activate Nibiru here. Now you're going to get hit with the Nibiru. The token's going to come out. Now we're going to be able to use Divine Temple to bring back this Flamberg Dragon. Flamberg will come out. Link the two monsters to IP Masquerina. We haven't used Flamberg yet, so Flamberg will activate summoning back our two monsters. Go ahead and use Snake Eye Ash and the IP to make Promethean Princess. Promethean will bring bring back that uh, Flamberg Dragon that, you, that was just sent to Graveyard out onto the field. Now we'll be able to use our Snake Eyes Oak and the Divine Temple, because that's the free uh, face-up card to send those two together. Summon our second Flamberg. Now we're going to go ahead and use Flamberg Dragons to push back the nib, because there's a nib on field. When we enter battle phase, this is 3,000, 3,027, so it's 8,700 damage, and this is OTK. So, guys, that's pretty much the two uh, the two Flambridge OTK that requires a little bit of setup, but it does work because it is a one-card combo, and the situations where it works is very likely because, like I said, you just need a Fire Engrave, which they'll have past turn one, and all you need is, you know, if you have a Valor or a Droll or a Black Witch, which is, you know, three Wanted, three D Bellstar, three Valor, three Droll, so it's like you have 12 copies of those type of cards, and you just need a starter. It can work with Black Witch, it can work with uh, Snake Eye Ash, and this is the otk setup and uh, if you get nibbed you can still kill them like i said so pretty interesting combo um so i did want to showcase that um as well so let's go ahead and dive into the next one all right so if you guys don't want to play two flamber dragons because if you're like me and you don't want to be playing bricks into your deck this is the otk with one flamber dragon but keep in mind it is no longer a one card combo you need snake eye ash plus dia bell star to essentially do this combo but it will um let you play around the brew and still otk you um in the same process um so it's almost the exact same setup you just uh do not play a second flamberg but it does require you to have more cards right so let's go ahead and show us or show you guys the example here like i said we need a spell caster like we did in the previous video so we kind of need a similar setup just instead of having a single snake eye ash we just need a dia bell star so let's go ahead and get started snake eye ash will get popular a uh, popular will get divine temple divine temple will place oak because we don't have a second flamberge now we're gonna, we will be able to send snake eye ash and oak to summon flamberge dragon here now we'll be able to make our sunlight wolf and then we'll be able to chain block our flamberge dragon uh, putting the uh, flamberge into the spell and trap zone and summoning out oak and any snake eyes because oak will summon back the missing snake eyes now we get nibiru here because we're obviously threatening appaloosa with all these monsters so we get nibiru here Divine Temple will activate and summon out our Flamber Dragon. Now we'll summon Diabell Star, the Black Witch. And it doesn't matter what you send. You can send a card in your hand or you can send Divine Temple. For our example, we'll send Divine Temple because we are going second. So assuming we played all our hand traps, we pretty much might not have a card in hand. But this doesn't matter because we don't need a card in hand because we can just send the Divine Temple. Go ahead and set our original. Go ahead and link the Flamber Dragon and the token away for Hida, the Fire Charmer. Hida will then bring back a token. We'll now go ahead and link anything uh, that token was any fire to summon back promethean princess promethean will summon back our flamber dragon flamber dragon will push back the nibiru and all we have to do is enter battle phase and this is 27 3025 and that is otk push back the nib enter battle phase and this is completely otk now one thing to actually keep in mind with both these combos i just showed you guys it is, does not require any fire king cards and the reason behind that is the way i play this deck is i actually side out all the fire king cards uh, which i will actually discuss um, a little bit later in the second portion the combo videos but if you're wondering why these two combos of otk and going second uh has not been using any fire king cards and that's why because i actually side out all the fire king cards which i think is fine because your deck is clearly uh just showing you guys by these combos is still 100 playable right and your hands get so much better especially if you're going second so this is the combo the otk combo that requires ash and witch um that does work without a second flambridge now, we're at the last portion of this video, or the last combo, I would say. And now, this combo is the OTK Zelantis line with them having no monsters involving Nightmare Phoenix. At this point, I've been seeing a lot of people mess up this combo a lot, but you can still OTK people even if they control no monsters with the Zelantis line, and this is how you do it. So, we're going to go ahead and get our uh, sample hand, getting Snake Eye Ash. This is a one card combo, all the way. It does not require that much setup. It's literally a one card combo. Uh, we're going to summon Snake Eye Ash, summon Poplar. Poplar will get our original. We'll be able to do the same thing, summoning Oak. Oak will bring back our uh, Snake Eye Ash, and then Poplar will place itself, summon Flamberge Dragon. Flamberge will then place any uh, card on the field because you need it 
hit just in case you get hit with Nibiru. You want to be able to use original to send popular and get Ponix. So, you know, for this example, we're also playing around Nibiru in the process. So this is OTK and playing around Nibiru. So it's like super broken. So we'll go ahead and summon back our two monsters. Go ahead and trigger our Sunlight Wolf to get our Flamber Dragon. Next, we'll be able to send our... Um, a copy of original here now the reason why you uh just activate this here is because at this point in time uh like i said in the previous um other uh iterations of this combo they pretty much will nibiru you here anyway because you're threatening appaloosa so if they don't nibiru you here they probably don't have nibiru unless they're like super pro playing you and holding it uh, but typically that's not really the case. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use our original sinful spoils to send and get our ponics because um, in this example, we actually need more bodies. So we can't actually just make Appaloosa straight up. Uh, so yeah, ponix will come out and get our sanctuaries. Um, go ahead and make our Phoenix here. Very important to make Nightmare Phoenix. And I will show you guys why when this combo completes, but you need Nightmare Phoenix as the bridge here, right? Go ahead and summon Phoenix, summon back, and then we'll be able to use Phoenix and another monster into Promethean Princess. Um, Promethean Princess will summon back out the Phoenix. Very important to summon it in this zone by the way because you need the arrows to be co-linked we're going to go ahead and link the Promethean Prince and the Sun Wolf for our Raging Phoenix Raging Phoenix will then summon Zelantis, and this is the OTK as it is just Zelantis and this now the reason why you want to summon Phoenix here is because the uh the World Sea Zelantis needs to point towards this uh, Nightmare Phoenix to get its bonus pop uh destroy in the battle phase effect and it only works when monsters are co-linked uh, so keep in mind to, to look at your Phoenix look at your Zelantis, and then see you where they would touch together okay uh, so you don't mess this up now also which is pretty funny if they for some reason held nibiru here you still have sanctuary into island island can pop flambridge to get um to get uh grunix grunix will then you know send kirin get ponix you can go into hita you can you can actually keep playing if you get nibiru it's just typically no one would nibiru you this late anyway so this combo is fairly safe but in case they like for some reason just don't nibiru you you still have um some plays afterwards right so that's like something to keep in mind. So now what's going to happen is you'll enter a uh, battle phase. You'll attack with Nightmare Phoenix, which is 1900. You'll attack with Zelantis, which is 2500. Then you'll use a Zelantis's effect in the battle phase because they are co-linked to destroy your Nightmare Phoenix. And because a fire monster was destroyed, you're able to activate Salamon Great Raging Phoenix, which reads if a face up fire monster you control is destroyed with battle or card effect while discarding your graveyard, target one of those monsters, special summon this card. So you target Nightmare Phoenix, special summon Raging Phoenix, and it gains 1900 because you destroyed that Phoenix. And now this thing will be at 4,700. Your life point, the life points are at 36. So this is way over game. And you pretty much killed your opponent through an empty board. They had no monsters on field and you're able to kill them uh, with your own. So you don't actually need monsters on the field to OTK with World Seas Zelantis. A lot of people don't know that. And this is exactly uh, how you do it. So that's pretty much it for this entire combo section. And let's go ahead and dive into more discussions into our second uh, part. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about deck list for Fire King. Now, this is a deck list that I will probably be using for our regional that's coming up literally tomorrow. If you guys are watching this video on the day of its release. Now, I really don't care that my list gets public because I'm probably going to go 9-0 anyway because I'm creamy. Uh, but so I'm just going to show you guys the deck list and explain to you guys some of the card choices and how I actually built this deck for this specific type of event and go ahead and talk to you guys about all the different options that you can play into Fire King for your specific event so because i'm entering a regional event i have you guys have to keep in mind that number one for the context that this deck is very expensive to play and it's very hard to play so you have two lines of barriers that pushes people away from playing this deck especially at the regional level so my prediction is for this event that i will probably only be playing two to three fire decks at max and mostly be playing against all these random decks like flounderies cash tira vanquish soul labyrinth all these like tier two decks because they're a lot cheaper and a lot easier to play than the fire king deck so that's why i built this deck accordingly for that so as you can see by this deck list there's no cross out designator and there's no lullaby of obedience which those two cards i think are very powerful and i do think that uh, if you're entering a ycs especially an american ycs you should be playing those cards 100 percent but for this regional i will not be playing those cards and this is exactly why so let's go ahead and talk about some of the cards that i think are pretty good um in, right now into fire king right 
So I think that you should always obviously be playing hand traps because the hand trap meta is just really good into a format that I believe is still full of variety. It might be a tier zero format at the YCS level at the highest peak of competitiveness. But if you're not at that level, this deck just isn't that represented as like a lot of people would think. So I think hand traps hitting um, not only, you know, obviously really good in the Fire King mirror match, but also at the same time, um, all, all these cards are generic enough to hit a different type of strategies, right? Like Ash Blossom is going to hit every deck, you know, Valor, Imperm, all these cards are going to hit every deck and you don't have to uh, specifically gear your deck towards one type of strategy and obviously no cross out in the deck because i can't get cross out for multiple values if i draw a cross out against something like floanderies or runic stun i'm just, just like it's useless so i want every card to actually just be playable and like i know nibiru might not be playable but at least it's playable against more matchups is what i'm trying to get at uh, so let's say I am entering a YCS, right? So in the context of that, I would probably be playing Designator Crossout somewhere in the main deck and probably be swapping this out for, you know, maybe a copy of Moonlit or like a, an extra copy of Valor or something like that because I do think Crossout, while it is a more focused mirror match card, I do think I need to, you know, have a card like this to put myself a little bit more of an edge when I go first, especially when I'm able to cross out cards such as engine cards like Bonfire and like Poplar and Kieran's and things like like that i think it's really more important um into the ycs type of environment and then definitely in the side i do have cash tier of fenrir here which is a pretty hot tech that i'll be playing this weekend because i think this card is really good against rogue decks and also really good when we get into hand trap wars into the mirror match uh because if both players draw three hand traps the guy who has fenrir is going to win and that's a little secret there that uh, I, I won't i'll talk about in another future video um uh, regarding to uh, the fire king deck and regarding to this format but if you guys are seeing this early on friday then you guys got the hidden goo uh so play this card if you're going to regionals tomorrow if you're watching this today which i don't think many people will but uh, if somehow you watched it on the day of it released then uh, you got some valuable information there uh so fenrir is um pretty good right now but let's say i were to be going to a uh, ycs event i would actually probably play lullaby of obedience because this card is just way better at, at, in the mirror match than like a fenrir would be uh but yeah like i said i'm trying to summon Fenrir against Vanquish Soul. I'm trying to summon Fenrir against Wanderees and all these uh, Voices Voice and all these type of uh, decks, right? So I think this card is way, way better. But uh, like I said, environment matters the most if you're entering a ycs definitely play lullaby of obedience um so that's pretty much my take for this entire fire king deck to play a bunch of hand traps play cross outs and lullaby if you are entering a higher tier event if you're not play fenrir's and play a lot more generic hand traps and like i said also i also have anti-spell fragrance which is way better against the rogue deck such as you know branded voiceless voice all this type of decks obviously a ycs this would be summon limit um so like i said you switch things around per event but i hope that i give you guys some insight depending on which event you're going to uh like i said if you're going to a regional event i would say you know play something similar to my list right here and if you're going to a ycs then uh take those cards out and play these type of cards instead they're so much more better and that's how i would view the fire king deck uh, per event right so that's my take on the deck list and uh, let's go ahead and move on to some more portions of the video all right, guys, so let's go ahead and go over to the Q&A portion of the video. Now, I only have like actually a few questions here, but I do think these are the most commonly asked questions. So I will clarify them in terms of context of Fire King, right? So a lot of people ask me, should I Ash Blossom Bonfires? And I say yes. The reason why you should Ash Blossom Bonfire is because if they have already a play, such as already a copy of Snake Eye Ash, they're never going to activate Bonfire first because if you activate Bonfire first, all you're really doing is losing to Drone Lockbird for no reason, whether... Whereas you can just summon the Snake Eye Ash, grab your Popular, get drolled there, and still do combo, even though it's not a strong combo, you can still do half combo through uh, the Droll and Lockbird. But if you get drolled on Bonfire, your turn just completely ends. So no one is ever going to play Bonfire first unless they um, don't have Snake Eye Ash. So you can comfortably activate Ash Blossom because it does telegraph that that's not in their hand. So I think this is a very clean place to activate Ash Blossom. Uh, so yes, I do think you should always be Ash Blossoming uh, Bonfire, especially on turn zero. All right, so for the next question I actually have here is a lot of people ask me this, and I've seen this question quite around, is if let's say my opponent starts with normal summon Snake Eye Ash, active, summon Snake Eye Ash, activate Snake Eye Ash effect, and my hand is infinite impermanence and Droll and Lockbird. Should I activate infinite impermanence on the Snake Eye Ash, or should I use Droll and Lockbird on the resolution and hold my infinite impermanence for next turn? What should I do? In this case, I have a clear cut answer for you guys. You should always be using your infinite impermanence first. Now, the reason behind that is number one, 
activating infinite impermanence first has a higher chance to just one stop their combo outright right if you guys are using droll knockbird and then they get they'll still be able to amass something and then after you use infinite impermanence they will still get something from the exchange right they will still load original sinful spoils in grave they'll still get value in exchange if you don't use um the infinite impermanence first which i that's the number one reason first of all right and i think that's a very solid reasoning number two which is why it just sells this point completely is because cross out designator is in the meta now if you don't use infinite impermanence here and you use draw and lockbird and they cross out the stroll and lockbird by the time you're able to use this infinite impermanence it won't be as impactful anymore because you missed the like best window to use it um because you tried to hold draw and lockbird and got hit with cross out designator if you activate infinite impermanence first and they activate cross out now you can draw them even though they can still make a small all half combo it's better than having that infinite impermanence in your hand that wasn't going to do anything anyways past the snake eye ash so if you open a copy of drawn lockbird and infinite impermanence always use the infinite impermanence first on the snake eye ash never hold your draw the draw should be a backup in your hand which is typically why i think a lot of people don't even like playing draw currently but if you are still playing draw which i do think is okay against fire king then that's how i would sequence them all right guys so if you guys are making it to this part of the video, which means you've completed the entire video, and I appreciate that a lot. If you guys could, please leave a like, comment, and a sub. If you guys found some new information or just overall enjoyed the entire video, I was a I hope that I was able to uh, teach you guys all the different type of combos that I learned throughout my experience of playing the deck and how I would build these um, this type of Fire King deck that I would build towards any specific event. So hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how I view my gameplay and especially my Fire King gameplay as well. Well, through all these different type of events and my mindset through um, playing this deck right and hopefully I, I would I was able to answer some of the more frequently asked questions on you know where to ash and where to use imperm and things like that even though that portion wasn't really that um, heavily intensive but you know the entire video mostly was based all around uh, main mainly the combos um, so I hope uh, that you guys um, found it insightful and uh, that's about it and I'll catch you all in the next one